outside. And we may have an example of that next. I, think. I was right. Here is the next example. It says find the area of the triangle below. Well, it says figure below, but this figure is a triangle. Now this dashed part of this over here on the next to the base that continues the base and the dashed part here are not parts of the triangle. They are just there to indicate that this line, the dashed line, goes from the vertex toward the opposite side of the triangle and would make a right angle with that side if that side were extended. That means that number, 1.3, is the height of this triangle. This is an example of a triangle which is made up of the solid lines whose height, this dashed line, the ver um, vertical dashed line, is on the outside. So some of our heights can be on the outside of our triangles. So when I use my area formula, 1 half base times height for this triangle, I'm going to use the base 2.8 because that's where my height is that's the line where if it was continued my height would be at a right angle to it and then a height of 1.3. So I would just be calculating 1 half 2.8 times 1.3. So let's see what that's going to look like when we do it. No, my picture doesn't well, I know my picture doesn't look quite as good as the one on the screen, but we get the point. We want to calculate 1 half for the area of this triangle, one half the base, which is this 2.8, times the height, which is the 1.3. And again, remember, the height is any line that goes from the vertex of the triangle to the opposite side or an extension of the opposite side that would make a right angle with that side. And there's only one such line that'll do that. So when I calculate this, I will have one half, so, Point one half times 2.8 times 1.3 and it will give me an area of 1.82 square units whatever those are. Remember that when we're doing area we're figuring out how much how many squares of one unit by one unit will fit in the triangle and it's not always going to come out to be whole numbers obviously one whole square is going to fit and 82 one hundredths of another square. Now it'll probably be all broken up in order to fit into the triangle. Also keep in mind the triangle pictures and most of the pictures are not to scale. Now in this triangle again we're supposed to find the area and we have that one side is 9, another side is 9, and another side is 6. Now I know a lot of you probably know that this is an isosceles triangle and you know how to calculate the height but that's not what we want to do in this one. Instead, what we want to do is we want to take the idea that we have all three sides of the triangle and use Heron's formula to calculate what the area of this triangle is. Since it's isosceles, we have another way to also calculate its area, but not all triangles where we have three sides and no height are going to be able to be calculated, have a height calculated like we can with the isosceles. So that's why we want to practice using Heron's formula. Now if you're like me, you need a little reminder about Heron's formula. So in this book, Heron's formula is defined as, there's a piece we need called S. S is one half of the perimeter, which is side one plus side two plus side three, which we call A, B, and C. It doesn't matter which one we pick to be A, B, or C, because this triangle is not a right triangle, so it doesn't have specifics of a, what A, B, and C are. And then we use that S in the formula, area equals the square root of s times s minus one of the sides times s minus another side times s minus a third side. So let's plug this in to our formula using our, the numbers that we have. We have that the area is going to be, well over here let's calc calculate s. s is one half of nine plus nine plus six, which is going to turn out to be uh, let's see, I think that's going to be 15. Let's check it. Oh, sorry, 12. 9 plus 3. So we're going to use 12 for S. So our area is going to be the square root of 12 times 12 minus, and it doesn't matter what we pick for A, we just need to use one of the sides. So I'll start with 9 times 12 minus, and I need to pick another side, so I've used this 9, so I'm going to use that one this time, another 9, and then finally 12 minus the side I haven't used yet, which is the 6, 
And when I calculate that, I'm going to end up with, let's see, uh, 12 times 12 minus 9 times 12 minus 9 times 12 minus 6. And I want the square root of that number. I get that this area is approximately 25.4558 square units. I need to put a point in there where we can actually see it. Now remember when you're putting these into your homework, you want to make sure that you have at least four to five decimal places on your answers. On this problem, we're going to move away from areas for a little bit and instead look at finding the length of the third side of this triangle. Now notice this triangle is a right triangle. That's what that symbol on the triangle means. And one, the two sides that make up the right angle are the legs. So I know that one leg is five. The other leg I don't know. So that's what I'm going to be finding. That means that this third side, the one that doesn't have anything to do with the right angle, or is completely is opposite the right angle, must be the hypotenuse. So when I'm plugging into the formula, remember the hypotenuse is the number that always goes in for C. So when I'm going to draw the triangle on the board, I'm going to draw it so that it's more in the standard way of looking at it, kind of right side up, so that the right angle is sitting on the ground. So here I've drawn the triangle. The right angle is sitting down flat on the ground or not the right angle, but the, there's a side sitting flat on the ground and it has the right angle as part of it. Now we were told that one of the legs was 5, so we'll say this leg is 5, and the other side we were given was the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle and its length was 13. Now remember that the formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and basically we're going to say that A is 5, that means what we're looking for is B, or this third side. So we will have 5 squared plus B squared, which we don't know, is equal to 13 squared. So that gives us 25 plus B squared equals 169. I just squared each of those numbers. Now I'm trying to solve for B, so the next step will be to subtract 25 from both sides. So that will give me b squared is equal to 144. And then finally I take the square root of both sides. Whenever I take the square root of both sides of something, I get both a positive and a negative number. The square root of 144 is 12. But since I'm talking about a length, this is a length, I only keep the positive number. So that tells me that the number b, side b, must be of length 12. Now, when we do these, you got to remember to check to whether or not you are looking for a, a leg of the triangle, in which case it's going to be either A or B, or if you're looking for the hypotenuse of the triangle, in which case you're going to need to know A and B, and you'll be trying to solve for C. In our next example, we're asked to find the perimeter and the area of a circle. Now, unfortunately, in drawing the circle, it was very difficult to put a per, um, number in the middle of the circle. So when I drew my picture, I had to put this number down here. This number indicates that from one side of the circle to the other, we have nine units. So when you go from one side of the circle to the other, what you found is a diameter. So we're told that the diameter of this circle is nine units, and we need to find the perimeter, remember another name for that is circumference, and the area of this circle. I'm going to pretend what I drew here is actually a circle. This is supposed to represent the circle that was on the screen, and its diameter is 9. Now the perimeter of the circle, remember also called circumference, is the formula is C equals 2 times pi times R, where R is the radius. Now we have to find the radius in order to be able to calculate this. Well, the radius is halfway across the circle. In other words, it would start in the middle and go just to one side. So I need to find half of 9. So over here I'll calculate the radius. It's 1 half times the diameter, which is 9, so that will be 4.5. So I get to plug in 4.5 here, and I'm going to find out that my circumference is 2 times pi times 4.5, which is approximately
9 times 